As someone who is fond of education, personally, I am very, very enamored when I'm seeing the 5D educators, I'm able to integrate them in our episodes, and so as those of you who regularly tune in know, I am a 5D mystic, and there's a huge difference between those who are mystics in that lovely pure consciousness, Purusha, that's 5D, unconditional love, and when you are pure consciousness, it means you're aware of yourself as a person, not that you're connected to necessarily anything that is supranatural, in fact, our lovely neuroscience community has expressed, explained, and have a couple of videos. If you want them, reach out. I have them bookmarked on YouTube where they explain how in those different cultures, so they went to study all the brains from the different cultures that talk about shamanism, and I think they've talked about deities. They have a lot of words that I forget, but long story short, this man who is, I believe, a PhD something, and neuroscience, I think, or he's part of the foundation that does the research because there's the same name of the foundation. In fact, I'm sure 4D is all over that one because, you know, they're the conspiracy group. So the people who think of every corporation and or entity and or something and create a whole story behind it besides listening to the data and looking at it with curiosity, Krishna Lila. So here's where pure consciousness, we're always curious about more because more information means more ability to create better future for tomorrow. That's why I love education. I mean, if we wanted the dark ages to stay around, I think we would have been unsuccessful, thankfully. So the brains of ours. Anyways, this beautiful neuroscience man, I believe he calls himself a he. I did not have the opportunity to ask him. He explains how in all of their studies, looking at all the different cultures is the word he uses, and I would call them subject matters potentially, eventually, maybe that's what they'll call them, but... Long story short, between shamanism and deities and the people who would successfully in the past and or have successfully gotten into flow state. So there's a way that our brain works. And as somebody who's a mystic and a channeler, I definitely know how the brain works and when these ascension energies come about. That's why, again, we talk about the light worker's life for the 5D mystic, not the 4D, because they believe evil exists. So they stay in this bandwidth of good and bad duality. They do all the yoga they want, but they still believe in energy vampires and dark auras. And so there you go. They're staying within a storyline versus relating themselves to being a human, to physics, energy, and noticing we're not machines either. So there's a lot of other types of stories that I hear out there about how we're, you know, software. No, I have a brain. In fact, I love my psychoeducators. They're the best. And we're going to get to that one in a minute since relationships are always key to Resolving trauma, which your body's naturally trying to get out. So we all have charge states as we're growing up, just normal charge states, which they actually have a very interesting role. When I look at my 15, 16, 14, yeah, my fight. So that age, I'm like, yeah, I can see Kali there. All right. 11, 12, no, she's pretty quiet. And my other younger ones, they're taken care of because I'm a very nurturing person to myself, which is actually where secure attachment and being your own sanctuary first of all so being able to be your own safe haven unconsciously loving who you are with flaws and imperfections check mark for those of us who have a love cycle and our pure consciousness again so you're aware that you are a person why would you talk crap in your head to yourself that makes no sense whatsoever as a teenager i was like yeah why would i do that and as i shared with my teenage friends the same idea apparently they all just seemed to think it was cool or i don't know drama land Mm, the reality is let me remember I have a restored embodied self. So the optimized version of a human being has the restored embodied self and all bodies are seeking to return to their homeostasis. Go figure. So your body's naturally trying to heal itself, but the movies have made it too cool to remain in drama land. And oh, human suffering, excuse me, because apparently love needs to be unrequainted. We're going to get to data points. This is how we do things on the IHP podcast and here, a little of this and that, and my 5D anyone's will be able to follow just easy peasy because you're not trying to use your left to say, oh, no, only A, B, only. So no, we use our right and our left, and then we know we're dealing with another person's opinion. It doesn't need to be linear. So only the people who need to prove things, which are adaptive children, because they haven't grown to be aware of themselves as mature functional adults, because otherwise they'd be using their cortex, not their temporal junction, and not their behind the scenes with the scanning what's going on. No, they'd be here taking in information without any assumption. So it's your presence. So when you're aware of yourself, your consciousness, you're present. So you're speaking to me. I'm hearing you, not making assumptions, 
No, no, I'm present in the now. Very easy when you respectfully understand you have a thought, I have a thought, and they won't match the way that I'm going to speak it. So if you're coming to me thinking I'm going to be linear, you already assumed something, and you didn't give me the shot to speak everything, and you didn't really want to perhaps, and that's okay because we don't have to speak together, do we? So the neuroscience guy, before I move into why love can only happen if it's a match, not if it's not a match, because your body, safe haven, unconsciously loving yourself with flaws and imperfections and secure base, knowing what you value, passion and want to follow in life. Teenager here again, not anymore, but oh, I was very focused on oh, that part too. So when your body and your mind are sanctuary, restorative embodied self, you use your left and right mode. So integration happens. So that means when sensations come up, the big S, it's not such a big S. It's like, wow, I have emotions. I'm a human. That's normal. Oh, I'm in a relationship where I'm getting lied to. Well, it's normal that I'm going to be upset. Hey, why are you lying? Oh, that's why. Okay, thank you. Bye. Straightforward. And as you move into the years of your lovely uh, growing up land and figure out most people are emotionally immature, insecure. Thank you, psychoeducators, for letting us in on the fun fact that even they wonder, most are supposed to be secure attachment. Why are all these people having such relationship issues? Because their attachment system in their brain, which they don't control at all, because once they became teenagers, they decided drama land was cool. Uh, again, I using my personal experiences, I don't know about you, I'm asking teenagers, and they seem to have the same idea about their friends, the ones that are a little bit more mature, emotionally speaking. So go figure, you know, there is actually a pruning process and there is this thing called you look at your peers to become your next network. So you leave your parents and your household behind. Then you can replicate the same stuff you have at home or you can grow up. Most people, that's that karma wheel because karma's actions that are done unconsciously. So when you're an adaptive child, in fact, there's a very specific way that these things happen, which is in fight, flight, freeze, or fright, or basically you're in a yellow or red, as the lovely Stephen Porges, polyvagal theory doctor, has explained. When people are interacting like that, their body's in a stressed out space and they're defensive. And other studies have shown that, yeah, most people, their brain, because they're not the owners of it, <clears throat> that's because they don't apply themselves though. Uh, when somebody is talking to them about something they are completely opposing, instead of saying, wait, this is another person, they have a different thought, I don't have to get all pissy inside. They don't do that. And they don't say, let me have an enjoyable, just random social interaction. No, because see again, adaptive children have to prove their points. So in their brain, they're actually allocating information so that they can have a list of things that, that way they can stay. I, I know I'm saying the truth. It's all within their own, not sanctuary because they're rigid. They need to know they're right. So this rigidity is actually the power and control that a body wants to feel safe. So there's a lot of different ways this could go. It's not our choice. We don't wield every person's brain. They wield their own brain. But you can wield yours and here's where. Neuroscience shows selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, and richness are what happen for those of us who we're not shamans, we're not deities, we're just people who have optimized the use of our brain and it's an integrated brain. So left and right work together, all hands on deck. Our default mode network does not scan others in the self to say, am I safe with this person who's spitting at me? Of course I'm safe, they have no weapon. So our social engagement system is online. Thank you, Daniel Siegel, for this tidbit. And as Stephen Porges points out, when you are in a state of love, so pure consciousness is also pure energy, purusha prakriti, pure love basically is me in my compassionate body because my ventral vagal nervous system, social engagement, mammalian heritage system is online and my reptilian nervous system is offline because I'm not in a physical threat and there's no bear chasing me. And that's what the machines get to show when you're in a physiological state of compassion. My 5D mystics, insula lights up, the amygdala, temporal junction, and the prefrontal cortex, where I take in the information and I see what can I do and what can I not do. So I'm responding, not reacting, and I know life is amazing because I'm having an interaction with some person. And if they're an adaptive child who's trying to prove they're right, take the floor, keep power and control, and then become hateful with me, I'm going to know how to be that Zen master of that Zen tradition story and say, wow, how wonderful, or whatever it is that I need to say to get out of what is a limited consciousness conversation and move towards infinite higher human consciousness potential experiences with the grown-ups of their hearts and their minds and their bodies because it's pretty awesome to have grown-up conversations with intellectually savvy people like the 5D educators. So keep learning, keep staying smart, stable, mature, adaptive, rational, and teachable. And tune on in and have a great day.